Now let's get right to a look at the next big tech revolution. P uh, Paul Dietrich is here, CEO of Fairfax Global Markets. It's great to see you. Thank you. How are you feeling today about these markets? You know, you're thinking, you're feeling good, you feel like it's overvalued, where's the strength? No, I don't think it's overvalued. Uh, you know, you look at the, uh, the forward P price earnings ratio in the market and it's, it's just about where the five year average is. And so uh, I think uh, this, is a, this is actually a pretty fair valued market. Yeah, and when you look at trade and all of these things coming in the pipeline and it's back and forth with China and concerns about earnings season being negative and CEOs not having the clarity to make decisions, I mean, is that all just hoopla or what? Well, I, you know, on the trade issues, uh, I, I was speaking with one of the uh, uh, trade talk representatives, a guy who works for Bob Lighthizer last oh. week, and he was talking about uh, the, the new trade talks this week with the Chinese, and he was actually, uh, I, I know there's been some press about uh, that the Chinese are narrowing, but we kind of want to narrow it too. You know, when you start trade talks, you throw it at everything, including right. the kitchen sink Did into the talks. Did he seem optimistic, because I heard the intellectual property was getting pulled, and that was a big one. Uh, um, did he seem optimistic? He, they, well, let, let me tell you one interesting story he told me that I haven't seen anywhere, is that he, he, he thought a few months ago that China was slow walking the talks so that they could go past the elections and they right. thought they'd get a better deal with Biden and the Democrats. The Chinese then hired uh, some U.S. political consultants and those U.S. political consultants have now changed the, ah. their minds. They basically said, look, the, the progressive Democratic Party today is not the party of Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Those two guys were globalists and they believed in free trade. The new Democratic Party does not. I mean, Elizabeth Warren last week said she not only wouldn't sign any agreement with uh, China, she wouldn't uh, support the, the new NAFTA agreement, and she'd keep the 25% tariffs. Biden's biggest contributors are the Firefighters Union, the Teamsters Union, and other manufacturers unions. They're inalterably opposed uh, to any of these uh, trade agreements. And so now the Chinese think that even though they think Trump is an unstable partner. They right. think they, he, at least he's a free trader and they right. think they can get a better deal That's out of him. That's really interesting. That's very interesting. And that means they might do a deal. Let's get to some of these uh, talks with 5G. I know you talked about some names that have momentum. You mentioned Verizon and Apple and Qualcomm with some great momentum. AT&T was a name that you thought was a great brand. Of course, Joker, the Joker will put it aside, but had an October box office record. Um, that was part of their deal with Time Warner. But what are you thinking about when you talk about 5G and these na types of names? It is going to be the most destructive technology we have seen. The head of the National Science Foundation said this was the most important technological advance since the invention of the Gutenberg printing press. So do you have to own these names? Uh, I think right now these are the ones that will uh, benefit the most coming out of the box. A lot of the 5G companies aren't public yet, mm -hmm. but they will be. I mean, think about it. You know, when we had 3G, which was the era of the BlackBerry and the flip phone, uh, Nokia flip phone, it allowed for texting. And then 4G uh, came in and the iPhone and smartphones wiped out the BlackBerry and the Nokia flip phone. Right. And we had internet. And we had the app economy, which led to the Ubers, the Airbnbs, the, the, uh, the Facebooks. I mean, all of these changed our lives and made billionaires out of the people who started them. Uh, and now with 5G, everything is going to be changed. And not just in the telecom world. This is what's been needed for driverless cars. It's the basis for smart cities. It's going to completely change healthcare uh, and the military uh, and, and a lot of artificial intelligence. And this is they're going to be, this new disruptive technology is, is going to make billionaires of a lot of new people, and it's also going to put a lot of other businesses into bankruptcy that we've known and loved in the past. Right. And so that's why it's so important. But the, the first companies to benefit that are publicly traded 
AT&T right now has a PE of, of like 10 something, a for, forward PE of yeah. 10. Uh, Verizon has a forward PE of 12, which is very, very low. I mean, uh, and AT&T has a 5.4% dividend yield, uh, Verizon a 4.1% dividend yield. Right. And then Apple, uh, which has, you know, it, it's a little bit higher at 15.7, it's forward PE. But think about Apple. Uh, next year, they're going to introduce their 5G phones. And once that happens, I mean, you can, Apple's selling for less than the average forward PE in, of the S&P 500. Once that happens, every Apple iPhone for the last 10 years is going to have to be upgraded because it's a new network platform. Right. So oh, the old I ones... See aren't going to be able to use the same apps, anything like that. It's going to be the greatest sales event for the three years after that that any company has ever had in the history of the world. Right. The tech revolution, 5G is going to change our lives. And I believe you, I really do. I just, uh, I just wonder about the timeline, but um, we'll continue to watch those. And you can see Apple today, which actually is only a few dollars off its high right now. Yeah. So it's been a great one. And the iPhone 11 has been received pretty well. Great to see you, Paul. Thank you. Paul Dietrich, CEO of Fairfax Global Markets.